Hi again everybody. In today's review session we're going to cover solutions, acids and bases, and the pH scale. In a previous lesson we talked about mixtures and specifically today we're going to focus on homogeneous mixtures or homogeneous mixtures, whichever you prefer. They're evenly distributed and some examples are like Kool-Aid and salt water. So if you recall what exactly is a solution? It is a solvent and a solute. The solvent is what actually does the dissolving. The most common solvent that we use, of course, is water. The second part of solution is the solute. That is what's actually being dissolved. So let's use our Kool-Aid example over here. The solvent would be the water. The solutes would be the Kool-Aid flavoring mix and the sugar. Okay, there are different types of solutions that you need to remember. They are saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated. So let's start with saturated. That means it contains the maximum amount of solute that it can hold at a given time. If something is unsaturated, that means it has less than the maximum and can still hold some more. And then if something is supersaturated, remember super means above, it is actually holding more than it should at a given time. So a typical solubility graph would look like this. Temperatures on the bottom, solute usually per 100 grams of water is on the y-axis. So if something is on the line, we call it saturated. If you see a point above the line, then the solution is super saturated. Remember, super means above. And then, of course, if you have a point down here, un, unsaturated, it's beneath the line. It is under the line. So unsaturated, under the line. Another skill that you'll have to be able to do on the final exam is learn how to interpret a solubility graph. These can look a little bit intimidating, but they're not that bad. So here it shows you the salts in 100 grams of water. Down here is the temperature, usually in Celsius. And then these graphs, these lines on the graph, are showing the solubility of that particular compound within that water. Notice that most of them, the higher the temperature you go, the more it dissolves. But not all substances are like that. For example, sodium chloride, it does increase a little bit, but it really doesn't care what the temperature of the water is. It's going to dissolve on its own. Potassium nitrate, however, shows a huge increase as the temperature goes up. So that's how you read one of these graphs. So let's look at this sample question here. This is giving you some data for trial 1 and trial 2, the different temperatures of water, and how much of it actually dissolved. So the question is asking you, what is the identity of the substance in the data? So all you have to do is figure out where 25 and 68 degrees are. So I would use either my finger or a highlighting tool to do that. Okay, so at, let's do 25 degrees first. That would be somewhere right around here. I'm just going to draw a line up. And then the other one is at 68 degrees. So I'm going to estimate about right here. Okay, and then the solubility is 40. So let's go to a horizontal line. Okay, that would meet right there. And then at 126, it would meet right about here. So the compound that they're talking about has to be potassium nitrate because it is the only one that meets that line at both of those times. Another skill that you might have to do with these graphs is determine whether something is saturated, supersaturated, or unsaturated. So for an example, if I put this dot right here and I'm talking about sodium nitrate, okay, so that would be this line right here. If it's asking you about the saturation level for sodium nitrate, you see how this purple dot is under the line? So in this case, sodium nitrate would be unsaturated. Okay? If you were talking about this same dot, and instead you were talking about potassium nitrate, now the dot is above the line, so that would be supersaturated. Okay? As a last example, if you have a dot that is directly on a line, 
So let me use this one for an example. That means potassium chlorate, chlorate at 50 degrees has exactly 20 grams of solubility. That is called saturated because it is right on the line. Okay, so one more time. On the line, saturated. Under the line, unsaturated. Above the line, supersaturated. Okay, let's move on to acids and bases really quickly because once something dissolves in water, it has the ability to become an acid, a base, or it can remain neutral. So let's start on the acid side first. Acids have a pH of less than 7. They will taste sour. They will produce hydronium ions. And in fact, the first letter of their compound will indeed be an H for hydrogen. They turn blue litmus paper red. I try to remember that acid ends in a D and red ends in a D. And acids also react with metals to produce a hydrogen gas. Okay, on the base side, bases are going to be greater than 7 for pH. They will taste bitter. They produce hydroxide ions. And in fact, their last two letters of their compound will be an O and an H. They turn red litmus paper blue. I try to remember blue for bases, B and B. And they will also turn phenolphthalein pink, which in case you see that in a chemical reaction, that's why we put that up there. Okay, just as a reminder, please remember that both acids and bases can be strong or weak. The further you go away from seven, the stronger it is. So as an example, a one would be a really strong acid, whereas a 13 would be a really strong base. Both of these produce ions when they dissolve in water, so they can conduct electricity. Both can be very dangerous, and both are corrosive. Okay, so here is a picture of the pH scale with some common substances on there. Keep in mind that 7 is neutral, so this is where our water lies, and that's what we usually um, compare to everything else. So anything less than 7 this way is an acid. Anything greater than 7 this way is a base. And remember, the further you go away from 7, the stronger they are. So these are strong acids. These are strong bases. So therefore, if something is a 6 or an 8, they would be considered weak. Okay, notice that a lot of our foods and things are on the acid side. And on the base side, it's a lot of cleaning solutions and things like that. Okay, so what is a neutral pH? Well, we've already mentioned that it was a 7, and when you add acids and bases together, they can neutralize one another. It's called a neutralization reaction, and that is what happens when you mix an acid and a base together, and they would form a salt and water. So anytime you add an acid and a base together, you'll end up with salt and water. So a very common example of that is if you've ever had indigestion or heartburn or know what that is, when you eat Tums or Rolades or any other kind of antacid, you are actually eating a base, and the point of it is, is to neutralize the excess acid that is in your stomach. Okay, guys, so that ends our lesson on solubility and acids and bases and solutions. Um, good luck with your review.